Picture this, it's 2025, and you're about to board a long-haul flight. You walk down the jet bridge expecting one of those brand new, state-of-the-art aircraft you've seen in airline commercials. But instead, you step onto an Airbus A330, a plane whose design dates back to the early 1990s. You might think the airline is giving you an outdated experience. But here's the twist, that airline specifically chose the A330 over newer, more advanced options. And they're not alone. Airlines around the world are still ordering A330s in 2025, even though there are supposedly better aircraft available. So what's going on? Why are airlines still in love with a 30-plus year old design? The answer reveals everything about how the airline business really works, and it's not what you think. The Airbus A330 first entered service in 1994 with Air Inter. At the time, it was revolutionary offering twin-engine efficiency on routes that previously required thirstier three- or four-engine aircraft. Fast forward three decades, and over 1,500 A330s have been delivered, with hundreds still in production as the updated A330neo variant. But here's what makes this remarkable. The aviation industry has introduced incredible new wide-body aircraft since then. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner promised to revolutionize long-haul travel with composite materials and cutting-edge technology. The Airbus A350 arrived with even more advanced features. These aircraft are lighter, more fuel-efficient, and packed with innovations the A330 simply can't match. Yet airlines keep choosing the A330. In fact, some carriers that already operate 787s and A350s are ordering additional A330neos. Delta Airlines, one of America's largest carriers, operates a massive fleet of A330s and continues to invest in them. Turkish Airlines, Garuda Indonesia, Air Asia X, and dozens of others tell the same story. This isn't nostalgia or poor decision-making. Airlines are ruthlessly practical businesses that analyze every cent of operating costs. If they're choosing the A330, there are concrete, compelling reasons why. Let's break down exactly what those reasons are. The first factor is simple, money. Specifically, upfront money. A brand new A330 900 Neo, the latest version, has a list price around $260 to $290 million. Sounds expensive, right? Now compare that to an A350-900, which lists for approximately $350 million, or a Boeing 7879 at around $330 million. That's a difference of $40 to $90 million per aircraft. For an airline ordering 10 planes, we're talking about savings of $400 million to nearly a $1 billion just on the purchase price. Even with the substantial discounts airlines negotiate, the A330 consistently comes in cheaper. But the economics go deeper than sticker price. The A330 shares a type rating with the A340, meaning pilots certified on one can fly the other with minimal additional training. More importantly, it shares significant commonality with Airbus's narrow body A320 family. The flight decks use similar systems and philosophy, making it easier and cheaper to train pilots who might fly both aircraft types. Then there's maintenance. Because the A330 has been around for so long, there's a massive global infrastructure to support it. Parts are readily available, often cheaper due to economies of scale, and sometimes even sitting in warehouses ready to ship. Maintenance crews know these aircraft inside and out. When an A330 has a technical issue in a remote airport, there's a good chance the local engineers have seen that exact problem before. Contrast this with newer aircraft, where specialized parts might need to be shipped from specific facilities, where fewer technicians have experience, and where troubleshooting can take longer. Time is money in aviation, and the A330's maturity translates to faster, cheaper maintenance. Here's something that often gets overlooked. Airlines don't just need efficient aircraft, they need aircraft that match their specific route demands. And for many airlines, the A330 hits a sweet spot that newer alternatives simply miss. The A33300, the larger variant, typically seats 250 to 290 passengers in a three-class configuration. The A33200, the shorter version, handles 210 to 250 passengers. This capacity range is absolutely perfect for the bulk of long-haul routes that airlines actually operate. Think about the reality of airline networks. Yes, there are mega-routes like New York to London, 
or Dubai to Sydney, where airlines can fill massive A380s or 777-300ERs. But the majority of long-haul flying happens on thinner routes, regional capitals to secondary European cities, growing Asian markets to North America, intra-Asian routes that connect emerging economies. On these routes, the A330 provides exactly the right capacity. It's large enough to be economical on longer sectors, but not so large that airlines struggle to fill seats. The 787 and A350, while more efficient per seat, often come in configurations that are either too small or push into ranges where they're competing with the same capacity as the A330 anyway. Here's where it gets interesting. The A330neo, introduced in 2018, improved fuel efficiency by about 14% compared to the older A330 CEO models. That narrowed the gap with the 787 and A350 significantly. Suddenly, airlines could get that perfect capacity, with economics that were close enough to the latest generation that the other advantages of the A330 tipped the scales. And there's another size consideration, airports. Not every airport can handle the largest wide bodies efficiently. The A330's dimensions and ground requirements are well established, and airport infrastructure worldwide is optimized for it. Airlines need aircraft they can count on, and the A330 has decades of proven operational reliability. There are no surprises left with this aircraft. Airlines know exactly how it will perform in every scenario, from tropical heat to arctic cold, from sea level airports to high altitude operations. This predictability is incredibly valuable. When Boeing launched the 787, it was grounded for months due to battery fires. The A350 had its own teething problems with engine issues. These are normal aspects of introducing new technology, but they create risk and uncertainty for airlines. The A330neo benefits from being an evolution rather than a revolution. It uses the same airframe, the same basic systems, and proven engines, the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000, which itself derives from engines with millions of flight hours. Airlines aren't guinea pigs testing new technology, they're getting refinement and optimization. There's also operational flexibility. The A330 can operate economically on both medium and long-haul routes. An airline might use it on a 6-hour regional route one day and a 12-hour intercontinental sector the next. This versatility means better aircraft utilization. If demand patterns shift, if a route needs to be rescheduled, or if an aircraft needs to be swapped, the A330 can adapt. Crew scheduling becomes simpler, too. With a large fleet of A330s, airlines have more flexibility in assigning pilots and cabin crew. Everyone knows the aircraft, training pipelines are efficient, and reserves can cover any aircraft in the fleet. Let's talk about something that doesn't make headlines but absolutely drives airline decisions the used aircraft market and sale leaseback opportunities. The A330 has tremendous residual value and liquidity because of its popularity and proven track record. If an airline needs to raise capital, they can sell A330s to lessors and lease them back, often at favorable terms. If they need to restructure their fleet, A330s can be sold or returned to lessors and quickly placed with another operator. This financial flexibility is a huge asset especially for airlines in developing markets or those facing economic uncertainty. Newer aircraft don't have this same liquidity yet. There's less certainty about their long-term value, fewer potential buyers, and a smaller leasing market. For financially savvy airlines, this makes the A330 lower risk. There's another market factor. Boeing's challenges over the past several years have created delivery delays and uncertainty around the 787 program. For airlines that need wide-body capacity now, not in three or four years, the A330neo offers a reliable alternative that Airbus can deliver on schedule. And let's not forget, Airbus has been very strategic with A330 pricing and deals. They know they're competing against their own A350, and they've positioned the A330neo as the value option. For airlines that already operate A330s and want to expand, the incremental cost and operational complexity of sticking with what they know is extremely attractive. So what does all this tell us? It's a masterclass in how the aviation industry actually works versus how we might think it works. We often assume that airlines want the newest, flashiest technology, but the reality is far more nuanced. 
Airlines want aircraft that maximize profitability over their entire life cycle. That means considering purchase price, financing terms, operating costs, maintenance expenses, crew training, route flexibility, residual values, and operational reliability. When you run those numbers for many airlines on many routes, the A330 wins. It's not the most technologically advanced, but it's optimized for real-world airline operations in ways that matter more than cutting-edge composite materials or the latest in-flight entertainment systems. The A350 and 787 are remarkable aircraft that absolutely have their place. For ultra-long-haul routes, for airlines building premium brands, for specific mission profiles, they're often the better choice. But they're not better for everything, and they're not better for everyone. The next time you board an A330, don't think you're getting second best. You're flying on an aircraft that your airline chose because it was the smartest business decision they could make. You're experiencing the result of decades of refinement, billions of dollars in development, and millions of flight hours of operational knowledge. The A330's continued success isn't about airlines being stuck in the past. It's about them being focused on the future of their own profitability and sustainability. In an industry where margins are razor thin and every decision matters, the A330 keeps winning because it simply makes sense. And that's why this 30-year-old design continues to fill order books and fly passengers around the world every single day. Sometimes, proven and practical beats new and flashy. In aviation, that's not just sometimes. It's most of the time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into airline economics, Make sure to like and subscribe for more aviation content that goes beyond the surface.